All right, so we're continuing our abstracts tutorial series. And this time we're still looking at abstracts number two, and that's the image you're seeing here. Uh, this series is just a bunch of abstract effects that I've come across over the years and tutorials that I can peel out of these pieces of art that I've been working on lately, just abstract art that uh, just uses Photoshop filters and setups and stuff, and you can create some interesting pieces out of. So if you missed the last episode, we looked at how to create one of these polygon kind of shape elements that we made here. And this episode, we're going to be looking at this Northern Lights effect or this Aurora Borealis uh, type style that we pulled in on the right-hand side and the left-hand side here. So I'm going to show you how to recreate something like that. Before we jump in, though, uh, this effect, I actually gleaned the information from a tutorial that I saw uh, uh, years back now that was on 123RF. Uh, blog and it was a pretty cool tutorial and so I've linked that below if you want to follow along on that one um, But I'm gonna show you kind of my own spin on it and I changed things up a little bit uh, To just kind of show you how to integrate it into something like this So let's go ahead and get started and we're going to create a new document And that document's going to be the same size as the ones we've been using in the pr in the previous couple of episodes So let's choose a new document file new width should be 1200 pixels in width and height should be 1200 pixels in height. <laughs> Resolution is 72. Let's press OK. Now, if I start going too fast, you can feel free to pause it and work at your own pace. Uh, this is just for fun to pick up new stuff in Photoshop. And since we're building abstract art, let's create a background first to kind of set the stage and figure out what we want to do. And since we're using a, uh, well, since we're creating a lighting effect, essentially, let's start with a dark background. So I'm going to change the uh, the foreground color I got here to 100% black, just like so. And then the background color, I'm going to change that to almost a deep purple color. So let's bring the slider up to more purplish, and choose a darker purple. So <clears throat> I'll be. Uh, kind of announcing the uh, or, or, or letting you know what RGB values I choose for these but feel free to pick your own colors and just kind of experiment and play around with the uh, with the color palette and we'll just go from there so the RGB value I have here is red is 66 green is 23 and blue is 78 so I'm gonna press OK now I want my gradient tool selected I want to make sure that I have uh, foreground to background selected on there and then we want linear as the option up here on the left hand side. So holding shift, just click at the top of your canvas and drag that selection southbound and you'll get a deep purple type background. We're also gonna create a layer above this and paint in some kind of blue areas just to break it up a little bit. So I'm gonna use a soft round brush. Let's go ahead and if you right click on your canvas, you can bring up the brush settings pretty fast there. Hardness will be zero, and let's turn the size up to maybe, I don't know, 400 or so. And let's choose a blue color for our foreground. So I'm gonna choose kind of more of a deeper cyan, almost blue. And I'm not gonna like just paint across, but I'm just gonna put on kind of splotches of color here to break things up a little bit. And that looks cool, but I'm gonna fade it out just a little bit. So I'm gonna turn the opacity back down to maybe about 60. There we go, and I like how that's looking, so I'm gonna press Control E to flatten those layers together. Now, let's go ahead and give this some uh, some texture, and I like using the noise filter, so let's go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. Let's do the uh, turn the amount around 2%. Distribution is Gaussian, Monochromatic is checked, press OK. Let's create a new layer above this one, and we're gonna do kind of a starry, kind of night background effect. So. With this new layer, let's go ahead and select uh, our background color. Let's choose the background for this one and pick 100% black. And then I'm going to introduce you to my all-time favorite shortcut, which is Control Delete, to simply fill that in with the background color. And what we're we doing? All right, we're going to add some noise. So filter, noise, add noise again. But this time we're going to bump it up to about 15, I think. All right. So we got that at 15, the other settings stay the same, so you have Gaussian and Monochromatic checked, okay. Let's go back up to the filters and we're gonna play with another filter called Cracular, I think it's called. So we're gonna go to the filter gallery and under here, under the texture drop down or folder or group or whatever you wanna call it, the first one is Cracular. And the spacing I have at six, the depth I have at seven, kinda of pull this over, and the brightness is 10, press okay. All right, let's adjust the levels, image, adjustments, levels. And that rightmost slider, let's just start dragging it over to bump the contrast up. 
kind of maybe around there. Looks cool, all right. Okay, now let's change that blend mode to color dodge. And we have kind of a starry night effect. So we've got our, uh, our background going. <clears throat> Excuse me, all right, and now we're gonna go, gonna go in and put down our northern lights. <laughs> let's create a new layer, just like so. And kind of the process we're gonna use here is we're gonna use a, a softer brush, round brush, we're gonna set that up and then we're gonna make a path and we're gonna stroke the path with white. So real quick, let's right click on our document. So we open up our brush settings. If you have, you want the brush uh, tool checked and let's turn the size down to about 20. And the hardness, let's bump that up to about 20. All right, we have our brush set up. Let's choose our foreground color. Let's make that 100% white. Ta -da. And then let's go to our pen tool. Our pen tool is over here on the left-hand side. If your toolbar is on the left-hand side, select that. And you want to make sure that path is turned on. You don't want shape, you want path. Okay, so now let's draw in or, or pen tool in our wavy uh, northern light type line. So what you want to do is just kind of create a wavy style shape. Maybe something like that. And this can go, you can be any way you want. So now, if you have your path there and your pen tool is still on, you can right click on that path and select stroke path. And then we have the tool set to brush. We just set that up and we have the color set to white. So let's press OK. Now to toggle off this path, you can simply go to your paths tab and click off of it. Then go back to layers, okay? Now we're gonna use a couple uh, duplicates or one duplicate of this layer. So press Control J and then that new layer, let's go ahead and hide that for now. Our original layer, let's select that and let's go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur, all right? And we're gonna blur this at a 90 degree angle. We're gonna turn the distance up though to maybe around 280. Let's try that, okay. Let's turn our original layer back on Okay, we're gonna do the same process. Filter, blur, motion blur, but we're gonna bring that down a little bit, like maybe around 154. Works for me. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna cursor that down. You can just use your arrow keys and we're gonna kind of bring that down to the bottom here. Now, the ends of this thing kind of abruptly stop, so we're gonna fade parts of this thing out. We're gonna use a, a layer uh, mask to do that. So with this layer selected, your topmost layer, let's come down here and create a layer mask. We're going to be painting with the brush tool. We want to make sure that black is the color that we're that we're painting in. We want to right click and turn our brush size up a little bit because you want to be able to take out areas of or knock out areas of this uh, band. And let's turn the hardness back to zero. Now let's go ahead and just start painting on our mask and get rid of some of these harsher, abrupt edges. Kind of like so. There we go. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the other layer. So let's select your original layer that you motion blurred further and give that a layer mask. And then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of remove areas that I don't really want make it so it's just kind of ghosted in from the background maybe even something like that so there we go it looks like it's kind of fading in from the night sky it looks kind of cool all right so let's create our texture that's going to make the uh, the wavy northern light effects so let's go to our topmost layer and make a new layer above that now let's turn 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 the background color to white and then my all-time favorite shortcut yet again, control delete to fill that in. Now you wanna make sure that your foreground is set to 100% black and your background is set to 100% white. This next uh, filter works the same way as the render, or the clouds renderer, render clouds did that we did the, uh, the last couple of episodes. So we're going to go to filter, uh, render, <laughs> fibers. And you're gonna get this weird looking thing. All right, so the fibers, you wanna set the variance to 16 and the strength to four. You want kind of a nice mixture of black and white contrast so you can kinda 
randomize it a little bit and see if you find something else you like. Um, I'm going to go with something like maybe... Ooh. Uh, that. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. So we have our fibers set here. Let's go to filter, blur, <clears throat> Gaussian blur, and we're going to set this to about five pixels in radius. Click OK. Let's go to filter, blur, motion blur, 90 degree angle, the distance. Let's kind of bump this up and play around with this. I'm going to do, let's do 225. OK. That's really dependent on your canvas size and your resolution settings. You might want to go further. Uh, yeah. So we have our kind of fiber look. We're going to set this to screen. Okay. We're also going to turn the opacity down just a hair. So let's just dump this back down to maybe around 55 or 60 for now. Okay. Now let's also adjust the levels of this, this layer. So layer, sorry, image adjustments levels and let's kind of bump up the contrast so we get a lot of the the darker areas to go almost transparent kind of like that see that okay that's what we want now we've got a lot of it going on though so I'm gonna turn the opacity down a little bit more actually to maybe 50 and we're gonna create another layer mask on top of this one so we can knock out the areas that we don't want so let's create another layer mask and let's use our brush tool. I think I'm going to size my brush tool up a little bit more to take out some larger chunks of area. And I'm just going to kind of follow along the wave I made before and just have some fun. It can overlap and underlap if that's even a word. Uh, let's see here. Let's kind of come across this way and get rid of the kind of the top bits here. Maybe down like that. And then around and kind of follow what you had before. I'm going to mask that out. And just kind of like that. And you can just kind of take out areas that you don't want. Change it up. There we go. Actually, I'm going to leave it a little bit in. That's basically your setup for that Northern Lights effect. But now we got to color it. All right. So let's create a layer above this one. And we're going to pick some colors. Uh, the northern lights that I've seen are usually kind of green. So let's pick kind of a greenish color, maybe more desaturated to start. So this RGB value is 145, 204, 125. I'm going to click OK. Now with our brush tool, I'm going to kind of do the banding that was at the bottom a little bit and do something like that maybe. I think that looks kind of cool. All right, so now let's pick another color and maybe go towards more towards bluish for now. Maybe a sea green might be cool. So this RGB value is 125, 204, 186. And I'm going to kind of paint in a little bit of the other areas here. All right, just like that. Now it looks pretty goofy, not until you set this blend mode to overlay. And you have just colored in or colorized your uh, northern lights and you can leave it like this and leave kind of the glow or if you want to get kind of a different effect you can hold control and select the mask of your of your fiber layer and then see how it selected the mask but we still have our color layer selected you can simply come down here to your layer uh, layer mask icon and click that and it will give that the same mask and there you go that's essentially it that's the uh, the effect Another thing you can do though is let's go ahead and hold shift and select our wavy layers and keep holding shift and click our grouping icon. So this one, I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to kind of drag it up because what I want to do is I want to create a duplicate copy. So I'm going to press control J. I'm going to take my bottom copy and this looks pretty cool once you start kind of layering these. It's a different effect. So I'm going to hold shift and drag this down and then I'm going to press control T and we're really going to size this up just like that all right now that layer you could colorize it differently you can do whatever you want I'm simply going to turn the opacity down a little bit and that's going to look pretty cool so if I drag that down to 50 there you go you got your northern lights 
Now that's really about it. Uh, you can use different colors, different background colors, really changes it up. Let's look at the original abstracts too, and that was done against a blue background. So you can see we have more blue than purple. The, uh, the actual Aurora Borealis effect that we got here, I painted in more of a cyan and then a pink on this side. And then you can see on the left hand side was more green and a little bit of the peach and blue coming through there. So it really depends on what type of effect you're looking for, what you want to do. But that is essentially, well that is how you create that effect. <laughs> All right, so again, a uh, big thank you, though, to uh, the old 123RF blog for uh, uh, the original information that, that I grabbed from there so long ago. Uh, if you missed the last episode, you're probably seeing it on your screen now, and there's a uh, that's where we did the polygon shapes that you see here, and it's called Polygon Blast. Uh, the episode before that, um, there probably should be a playlist. Uh, was called Flame Nebula or Fire Nebula or something like that, and that was how to colorize uh, render clouds and colorize them and create a kind of space blurry thing effect there. All right, so uh, Abstracts 3 and 4 will probably be up on the shop as you're watching this, and we'll get ready for another batch of tutorials and just see how far along this series goes, and hopefully you get some... Uh, some use out of it. If you create something like this, please tweet it at me so I can check it out. I love checking it out. I love retweeting it and showing off your work to other people and just seeing how you guys use it in other artwork. So have some fun, enjoy, and I will see you when I see you. <laughs> Later.